Hi there, my name's Callie Brennan and I'd like to welcome you to our garden where we are doing a lot of passive water harvesting in order to improve the drought resilience and the flood resilience and the bushfire resilience of our garden. So I'd love to show you around. <laughs> I run a permaculture design business here in Canberra called Canberra Permaculture Design and Education. And as part of that, we have been making our garden as sustainable as possible. One of the things that I've been very interested in doing is seeing how we can adapt as best as possible to the climate change that's already locked in. So today I'd like to show you all about passive water harvesting and we're going to look at some gravel filled trenches, some swales, some equipment that you would find useful if you wanted to build this yourself in your garden and lastly some other ways to be water wise which in our garden involves using lots of wicking beds. Passive water harvesting literally means just letting gravity do the work for you so there's no mechanics involved, there's no pumping, it's just letting nature drop rain and then capturing it and diverting it to where you want in your garden. So I'd like to show you this drainage channel here which we put in. It's a bit homely but it works. It's a grate on top of a small plastic channel. This takes water from the driveway. It also takes overflow from the tank, the rainwater tank that we have at the back of the house and it also will take grey water from the shower the water comes into this channel. This is technically called a French drain. It's literally just a trench lined with a little bit of landscape fabric, sometimes called geotextile, and then filled with pebbles. The water flows beneath the pebbles all the way along here and then travels under our little cute baby bridge and then continues to travel. We've dug the channel deeper as we head up into the garden. There's a very slight incline and flows into this area here. If this system fills up with water, because you can see it's not a very big system, we actually have a hidden piece of pipe that goes under the ground from here and joins up with our much larger water harvesting area. So come with me and I'll show you. Okay, right now I'm standing in the middle of our swale system. Anybody could do this if you've got a bit of a backyard and a little bit of a slope. So we're on a slope here. A swale is simply a trench. What you have to do to make a swale work is to make sure that it's level and then when water enters it, it gradually fills up along its length and it doesn't flow quickly. As soon as water flows quickly, it's dangerous and it erodes soil and it can take organic matter, all sorts of good things away with it and take it down the slope. We don't want to do that. What we're trying to do is slow water down because slow water has a chance to soak into the soil. So this whole system, if I walk you along here, is actually almost exactly the same level. So when it rains, I would be standing now, this area, I would have the water up to here on my gum boots. So we usually expect only about four hours of water in here before it soaks away and I can use this as a path again. Around me I've actually got three garden beds, I've got my snow peas coming here. So what happens with the swale is that when it fills up with water we don't actually drown the vegetables but we surround them. So this makes the entire subsoil and the area surrounding the vegetables moist without inundating the roots of the vegetables themselves. So one of the things um, that is really exciting in a swale is this rise behind it. So it's all very well digging a level trench, but what do you do with all the soil that you have just dug out? You put this in a rise on the downslope side. It's called a berm. And in this berm, we have fruit trees and other perennial plants. These plants send down very deep roots that are gonna love all the extra moisture because the moisture that's stored in the swale goes down, eventually hits either very hard clay or the bedrock and slowly starts to seep downhill, which is this way. So having a range of deep rooted plants on this side means that that water is being put to good use. So I fully expect, especially in the season like this, I will not have to water this berm at all. 
indication of how happy everything is. There's our peppermint, which is as happy as anything. So when you want to start harvesting water in your garden, one of the things that's really handy to know is the lay of the land, to work out where your contours are. That is, if you're gonna build something like a swale, it's good if it's level, as level as possible. And to do that, you need to find a level line across your garden at a convenient place where you'd like to build your swale. There's some equipment that I'd like to show you. And the first piece of equipment is this little A-shaped piece of kit. Now the way to make an A-frame is to find a level surface to start with. Make sure that each of your sticks is exactly the same length. And then if you do have a spirit level, use that to make sure that you can make your cross piece ex completely level when you're standing this on a level surface. Then you know everything's calibrated to begin with. You can see that the spirit level and the water bottle are all in alignment. So what I do is I make sure that this point here is as level as it can be and then I put in a stick to mark that point. Then I go from my new point and I swing around and what I'm essentially doing is walking across the landscape and I check I'm level again here and so I put in another marker stick and hopefully that gives you an idea. I could continue to walk along here and make a line. Then if I get out my spade, I can dig along this line and I will be assured that this is a pretty level line across my landscape. So if I made my swale or my French drain here and water flowed across the slope, it would then stop and spread out along the length of my swale. Rather than a fancy laser level, this does the same thing over slightly shorter distances. This is called a water level. Now, the trick with a water level is that water always is at the same elevation. So what we've got here is a clear pipe, which I've cable tied to the top of each stick. I've made sure each stick is the same height and I've made sure that my measuring tape starts at exactly the same point. So again, I calibrated this on the level surface and I made sure everything was even. So what this means is that if I have two sticks and I put them apart like this, I can check to see what my elevations are on each of the stick because the water will show me. Now, the important thing with a water level is not actually the number, but the difference between the two numbers. So if you find there's a difference, then that is the difference in height between one and the other. And what we're going to do is we're now measuring to check to see this should be approximately level because we just did that with the A-frame. But what we do is I'll look and I've got the number 42 at the moment. What's yours reading? 44. 44. So what that means is there's actually a two centimetre difference between our two points. I think this particular tube is about 10 to 15 metres, but if you had a bigger tube you could go from one end of your garden to the other. And again, this was very inexpensive and really quite fun to use. One of the things that you might be wondering is, can you do passive water harvesting if you don't have a slope? If you have a completely level piece of ground, you can still harvest water in your soil if you're prepared to dig a channel um, and then you can build up garden beds on either side of it. You can actually use a pathway like this to harvest water and because you've dug out the pathway, you're able to then grow plants in higher ground on either side in soil that's no longer saturated. So maybe you're really interested in water harvesting, but your personal circumstances mean that you don't have a big garden, maybe you live in an apartment, you've got a balcony. So I just thought I'd show you something else that we found very helpful um, in terms of keeping our garden as water wise as possible. And these are called wicking beds. Now you may have heard of wicking beds before. They're basically just the same as a self-watering pot. They are a bed with a reservoir of water at the bottom and they're called wicking beds because water wicks up through soil um, and helps to water your plants. So every single container in this greenhouse is actually a wicking bed. So thank you so much for coming to have a look around our garden so that we could show the passive water harvesting that we have in place in our yard. I also want to encourage you to have a go. Don't be frightened of experimenting a little bit with 
any kind of passive water harvesting, no matter how small scale, it's all going to add up and help to make your garden more resilient to hot weather and perhaps even help with flood prevention, um, depending on your circumstances. It's amazing how addictive it is once you get started. So all I can say is give it a go, see if it's fun, and uh, I wish you all the best.